Joshimat is sticks. The small hill town situated in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand at a height of about 6,000 feet is facing a disaster like no other. Over hundreds of houses have developed dangerous cracks. And today we have with us Dr. Kala Chan Sen. He is the director of Vadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, an autonomous institute under Department of Science and Technology. The scientists from the institute were part of the large scale study that, uh, that gave these warnings of an upcoming disaster. Dr. Sain, thank you so much for coming to CNN News 18 studio. Thank you so much for having me in the studio. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Sain, to start off, uh, what led to this disaster? Uh, disaster uh, is uh, about to come and uh, these things are happening and people are under panic and this area in Josimot uh, has developed a lot of cracks into the walls and ceilings of a number of houses and uh, the subsidence and the cracking process are not new today. Um, it happened and it started long back and still it is going on. Uh, basically, if you look into this uh, Josimot region, uh, the town has been developed uh, over a deposit or debris of a past landslide long back and it has been reported into a Himalayan um, gazetteer in 18, I think, uh, uh, 86 by Atkins and there he mentioned uh, that the town uh, was uh, they, they have found out some of the dilapidated uh, uh, temples into that regions and they uh, showed uh, the evidences of the uh, past landslides or old landslides over which the city has been built up. The main, uh, and this has also been reported in 1976 uh, uh, Misro committee report uh, that uh, the particular town uh, is over the subsidence uh, zone. This region, uh, Josimot, and if you look into this um, um, uh, Kum uh, Kumain region, uh, falls under seismic zone uh, 5, which is seismically, tectonically very active. And uh, because of the subduction of the Indian plate over the Eurasian plate at the convergence, a um, lot of strain energy are accumulated. And there have been the one of the main central thrust uh, through which uh, the accumulated strain into the subsurface gets released in the form of earthquakes. So tectonically, this region is also not very stable. And uh, this also experienced uh, landslides, I explained. And that landslide also triggered by uh, some sort of earthquake. That's what the report says in 1886 report. The most important thing why this region is sinking or experiencing some sort of uh, subsidence because of a lot of activities going on into the subsurface, as well as some activities going on on the surface. And uh, the, since it is on the debris and the rock uh, into this region, which is uh, consisting of some sort of cystose, uh, some sort of uh, quarzite, and these rocks are weathered. And because of the weather, uh, the strength of the rock has gone down and shear strength also have come down because of the percolation of the water. And these, these rocks are not able to sustain the load given by the uh, surface uh, by different structures, hotels, restaurants, even some sort of road has been constructed into this region. The drainage pattern has not been made properly and that the natural water flow uh, are not able to make, they are actually hindered, they are passage. And this, uh, this flow are uh, uh, finding the new paths, alternate paths and creating some more stress. And if you look into this region again, the Josimot, uh, there are a lot of nalas or uh, some sort of rivers, and they are flowing down uh, into the slope region. And then uh, they are uh, making some sort of toe cutting. So because of the toe cutting, a lot of sediments and debris are also uh, getting loosened. They are uh, washed away. Uh, and right. the load from the surface is unable to sustain. So it is right. and it Do is... Uh, right. Dr. Singh, like you're, uh, like you're uh, highlighting that the region is naturally very vulnerable to disasters, right? And uh, like the previous report, there was a report in 1976 also, which warned that any upcoming construction activities should be regulated 
there shouldn't be a very yeah. you know uh, aggressive construction activities carried out in the region or we'll have more such disasters so um, uh, in the, in the same light we have this uh, hydropower project the ntpc tapovan project which is under construction there's a 12 km tunnel also being constructed for the purpose uh, is is that another uh, factor that probably accelerated uh, you know uh, these these dangerous cracks and the bursting of aquifers in the region yeah, you see uh, this is a concern but uh, we cannot categorically state uh, that the cracks uh, what are uh, being developed into this region is because of only on the uh, on the tunnel constructions uh, into the soft surface uh, but uh, we need to study and uh, based on the observations uh, we can understand we can comprehend what exactly happening into the soft surface definitely if there is some sort of tunnel if there is some sort of uh, bursting of the rocks and uh, they they may cause some sort of damage or hollow into the sub, uh, subsurface and that can also uh, create some sort of subsidence of the Yosemite region but categorically if you want to point out that uh, we need to uh, do some sort of study and understand what exactly happening of right. course uh, it has been reported some uh, some places that uh, in the subsurface aquifer and uh, they are uh, uh, you, you see the because of this construction of the tunnel because of these things but uh, we are not very much sure because tunnel is also little far away from the uh, Yosemite region but uh, that also we cannot rule out but we need to study uh, based on seismological data based on uh, some other um, by placing sensitive instrument and by looking into what exactly happening so if aquifer uh, gets um, a uh, blasted or aquifer uh, gets uh, some sort of uh, uh, disturbed into the region and the water percolates uh, further that may create also some sort of uh, weakness of the rocks and subsidence can, can take place but we need to study and then right. it. other thing what we have observed uh, from this wadia institute is that that because of this lot of rivers lot of nalas and then in 2021 there have been heavy rainfall and 2022 um, in February, there have been Rishiganga, Dhaliganga, the deluge. So all water, lot of water, lot of sediments, they have uh, flowed down. And since all the rivers are in the slope uh, of the Yosemite regions, the toe cutting is very, very important phenomena. And the toe cutting may be a most important factor uh, which are responsible for the subsidence and sinking of this uh, uh, Yosemite region. Could you so elaborate on this? Toe cutting? Yes, on toe yeah. cutting. What I am telling that uh, Josimat is situated over here and that down the slope there are a lot of nalas and rivers. So the natural waters are also flowing into that. And when it flows, it also uh, it erodes a lot of uh, uh, material because I told that rock into that area are cystos, uh, quadjites, uh, nisic. Uh, they are weathered. They are actually, they, they have lost their strength. So if something uh, flows over that, definitely those material also will go down. And if the flow of the water gets enhanced, that exactly happened in 2021 during the heavy rainfall. Flash, flash. As well as 2022, uh, February, the Rishiganga, Daliganga deluge, that time also a lot of sediments and water have come down. And they have uh, made or aggravated the toe erosion uh, much more. And if toe erosion, that means uh, this situation, the Josimot is situated over here and the bottom some cutting is there, toe, ero, toe cutting we are telling, definitely it will not be able to sustain that, that load, what it is getting experienced in, by, by the structures, by the and many other things. So that is responsible for the uh, subsidence. What you are also telling that may be uh, one of the factor that if tunnel is constructed, if blast things are there, then aquifer um, also um, gets uh, brushed and those uh, water can percolate and create some sort of path uh, for uh, uh, development of the uh, subsidence. So, so as, as a scientist, uh, sorry, please continue. Third important thing that uh, the, the city, because it's very important, uh, uh, because it is a gateway uh, to the uh, Badrinath, uh, to the... Uh, some sort of uh, Hempun Sahib, again, Oli, uh, as well as some sort of um, UNESCO uh, uh, site uh, of, um, in, in, for the, the Valley of Flowers. So most of the people, whenever they go there, 
they settle or they try to stay uh, into the Joshi Mod. So a lot of uh, hotels, a lot of students uh, have been constructed. I think they have not followed the uh, scientific, uh, uh, scientifically they have not been built. And in that construction, the, the drainage the system into the Josimot area also have been disturbed. And then the natural flow, uh, they are instead of water flowing actual path, which is naturally created, they, because of these constructions, they have been obstructed. And that flow is uh, taking the uh, alternate path. And when while taking the alternate path, they are also creating some sort of pressure. And that also is responsible for the development of cracks and and what are we are experiencing today but this is not a phenomenon of one day it has been experiencing since long tectonically active lot of subsurface phenomena is going on above that lot of surface load that load i am telling because of this anthropogenic and developmental activities are also going on uh, like you're saying, the geological foundation of the town itself has always been under question. Uh, and probably this uh, this disaster gives us a glimpse into the future of the kind of disaster that Himalayan region could face, you know, as Im also impacts of climate change and other human and natural factors intensify. As a scientist, what do you suggest? What should be the stance of the government? What action should be taken on the ground that people can be saved and, you know, any loss of life and, dam uh, you know, a property can be prevented in, in the coming times? Yeah, this is a very, very crucial uh, uh, question. And uh, for that, uh, there is no one single answer. Uh, but I can suggest that uh, some of the remedial measures uh, that can be taken up uh, so that uh, the people uh, living into the Josimot area uh, can feel secured uh, and they will also have some sort of confidence uh, not to leave their places. Number one, that whatever I told that uh, because of all these phenomena, this uh, uh, city is experiencing some sort of subsidence development of the cracks. The root causes, if we can understand properly, and if we can take action on the root causes, then definitely uh, some of the remedial uh, will take place. But what are the root causes and what are the remedial measures we can take? That number one, that already if we look into the seismically active zone, we know that zone five. If we look into the landslide susceptibility, vulnerability, that also it is the highest susceptible, susceptible and vulnerable zone. But we need to do at this moment for the Josimot microgenesis by looking into the several factors, their structures, their lithology, asperity, slope, curvature. We need to prepare microgenesis of, of, of map into for the um, uh, Josimot region. And that one will help us to take action one after another because at one go, it cannot be done. What we have to do, if we can have that a uh, microgenesis map and understand that which part is more susceptible to uh, um, uh, landslide, then uh, those regions we should stop completely any developmental activities or maybe curtail whatever developmental activities are going on, number one. Number two, I have told the drainage system into this uh, city uh, is not properly done. And because of that, uh, the water flow a nat natural path is not able to flow, uh, follow. So it is following the alternate path and creating a lot of uh, pressure uh, into that region. So we have to replan uh, the, the drainage system into that region. Uh, this is the second point. Third point, since it is a slope region and it is into the slope, so we have to do uh, this in the gradient, step by step. We can't make an at one go at uh, the drainage system or whatever may be. Fourth thing, that whenever we plan for any drainage pattern into that region, drainage system into the region, we have to use impervious material that can be um, impervious, geosynthetic, etc., so that the water cannot percolate further down. Because uh, what exactly happening, percolation of the water into the ground and, uh, and uh, going through the crack, it is creating a lot of uh, um, uh, fractures and a lot of uh, uh, plane of weaknesses through which the land can slide and people can, can experience some sort of hazard into that regions. Then, then fifth important thing into this region, uh, we have to look into that how will we be able to revive the path of the natural flow of water and if it is possible, then we have to do that. 
sewerage system also has not been done properly into this region that sewerage also has to be planned properly and if we can take care of all these things uh, i think we will be able to make some sort of uh, measures and at this moment we have also heard and seen by our scientists also into the field uh, i have got the report from uh, her uh, that some of the rooms uh, develop the cracks uh, in the wall as well as in the ceiling so those houses uh, are unlikely to survive so we have to ask the people living into those type of houses have to be evacuated uh, and and we have to see whether those uh, structures can be retrofitted if not uh, i think those buildings we should not uh, use so like that some of the things uh, i thought that it should be done uh, in a graded manner not at one go and uh, if we can do that i think we will be able to make uh, the some sort of uh, mitigation as well as we will be able to because the people we cannot ask to leave the place they have to stay but we have to build confidence in them we have to build a disaster resilient um, some sort of management or some sort of um, strategy even you told very rightly climate change we have to look into the climate adaptable future so lot many things scientifically we should look into and then accordingly whatever recommendation will be given based on scientific evidence or scientific data we should follow very strictly particularly in this zone when where we are telling that it is climate in this phenomena taking place subsurface processes are going on surface load are over there so lot many things are happening uh, and so many factors are responsible uh, for the subsidence and uh, uh, development of the cracks into these regions so each and everything we have to look into uh, at greater depth at length but it, it needs time because it can't be done immediately right so i mean uh, hopefully the government as well as the local administration really takes all these points into consideration because uh, uh, this is a very ecologically uh, fragile region and we really need uh, to save uh, it so just one last question to wrap it up uh, what if you know uh, if we don't take the measures right now what the future can hold yeah you see that uh, these uh, i think and uh, many of uh, scientists uh, they believe that when we are seeing the cracks are widening and even in the satellite data we have looked into some of the rivers if you look into the satellite data at some past um, uh, in, in the time then you can see the channel into the rivers are getting widened so channels in the river uh, channel uh, widening means uh, they are making much more impact to the toe erosion toe cutting so the subsidence and landslides uh, may take place but we cannot say at this moment when exactly they may take place but if we can place sensors um, sensitive instrument that can be visometer clinometer total stations and insert and if we can constantly monitor uh, we will be able to know uh, that uh, what exactly going to happen into this region and then uh, if they, because you see landslide we are envisaging into this region but landslide doesn't take place immediately unless there is a some sort of rainfall unless there is some sort of tectonic movement unless there is a heavy drawdown of water from the uh, ground unless there is some sort of anthropogenic activities but in this region what we are seeing that anthropogenic activities has to be curtailed to uh, right. have solution to the right. region to be safe uh, and and secured for this uh, people living into this region very right sir on that note uh, i mean uh, we'll i think summarize this discussion as that all the anthropogenic activities we really need to take into consideration and uh, we are seeing a disaster we have seen flash floods we have seen landslides and uh, we can't really afford to uh, lose any more people in in, in these disasters anymore uh, uh, so thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights and uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining on uh, cnn news 18 thank you sishti for uh, giving me chance and uh, share my thoughts views through your channel thank you very much yeah